Hello, everybody, and welcome to Starnet Link. And today we're doing a follow up interview with Barbara. Um, how is everything going on your end, and what have you been doing with your, um, I guess, the hybrid program and the Galactic Council from the last time we talked? Well, um, I've, I guess I've been busy because I've had several um, instances where I was taken again. I know that for sure. And uh, so the hybrid program is going really good. Um, I have been up there a few times and been with the babies and also with the ship council. And uh, they have been telling me, um, letting me know that there's going to be more and more sightings. They're going to send smaller crafts down because they want people to be aware more that they're around and that what's happening and you know be open for this whole well our basically our dual lives here <laughs> and uh, so they're going to send more and more crafts and uh, that was about in October and so um you know, and if you see the reports, there's more and more things being reported and that people are recording it and they make sure that they that we can see them because our vision is such a, a small percentage that we can see. And uh, that's why a lot of times the ships fade in and out because they go into, into another vibrational thing that we can see. And so they they are making sure now more that they are in in our range so we can see them, because they really want us to be aware that um, um, that they are here, and they need to help us because our planet is in dire need. Uh, all the environment is falling apart, and and it's yeah we're gonna have some really big upheavals coming up. And I got that also from the Galactic Council. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Galactic Council, like the different types of beings that you've saw on the council or what what their overall, I guess, agenda is or what they are most concerned about with you and Earth? Well, the Galactic Council is, they have a huge amount of different species up there really i mean it's amazing and and creatures that we don't even how should i say wouldn't even consider as intelligent like octopuses there's an octopus up there i mean i i i literally have telepathically communicated with them and very old and ancient and black and and you know very ancient and very and uh, yeah, he welcomed me to the council at one time and we just had eye contact. And so we had, we started telepathic communicating. And uh, so I, I told him, we have several species of you on our planet. And he says, I know. And then he, <laughs> and then he, uh, um, I told, I, I apologize that we don't take better, better care of our um environment and our um oceans you know because we're, we're really messing them up and he said that is a problem <laughs> but but on the um i've seen all kinds of different people i mean like human looking but with all kinds of different like there's one that has a little cat-like face and then there's blue ones, the Arcturians, they're blue. And um, well, the, the Pleiadians, they're more really more like us. And um, uh, then there are light beings, like the, the, the head of the council is just a light being. It manifested itself for me, I think, in, in a human kind of form, but the head was only light and you couldn't see a face or anything, it was just light. And uh, I've seen a Sasquatch in the back walk around so Sasquatch are up there and uh, all kinds of there were some creatures lying uh, they were flat on the on the floor on the on the ground and 
but apparently they were intelligent. I couldn't make out what they were. And so um, there's all kinds of all different grays and, and all kinds of different, yeah, can't even start. <laughs> and, uh, and at the Galactic Council, um, you know, I told you that I have a companion and they're gonna send me to another planet. Well, they did. They did send me one uh, one night and I was, they don't, how should I say, they don't take me with my physical body. They take me like uh, out of body because uh, they say they are on the other side of the galaxy and our physical bodies would not uh, last that the strain of transporting there. So, um, so I have a kind of a, human container over the, <laughs> at the other end. <laughs> and so the, they took me, uh, the, I, I went to the, when was that in, oh, no, in July? Yeah, they took me to, I got there and um, my companion was there. And uh, so we were told we will be sent to another planet and we had to stand on a kind of like a, round circle that was kind of lighter and uh, he you know he has those slinky arms very really slinky arms and he put those wrapped them twice around me and then we were transported um, to another planet and there we were welcomed by beings I don't have a picture of them yet um, but it's it's coming <laughs> I have my guy draw uh, do the picture for it but um, the, uh, uh, they were very tall, also human figures, kind of, but very pointed heads. Let me see, I do have a drawing here. Maybe I can show you that one. That would be interesting. Um, do you want me to share the picture that you sent me from the email? That you yeah, you can, you can do that, yes. Okay. You can do that. Let me see, where, where is it? Okay, let me screen share here. So, can you see that, Barbara? Yeah, that's that's a, yeah, that's my that's my guide. He's with me. Yep, that's him. <laughs> Do you know what species he is or where he's from? No, I I I don't know. He just um he just told me he's he's from the planet Shrieks. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know but um, I don't know if you can see this one here so, oh, wait a minute where am I here oh no that doesn't look too good okay Hold, um, move it to oh there it is yeah we can see it yeah oh wow That's, and they have four arms they have two arms on the top and, and the head is very very pointed and in the in the middle they have like a, a diamond shape and and the very center of it is like a, a gold thingy so but a very tall like maybe about seven seven and a half feet tall maybe even eight feet very tall and we were met by eight of them and i i had to tell them that the galactic council would like them to activate again their feelings and emotions because a lot of the species did away with that because you know with all the technology and stuff so they said and um, that's what they want them to get back again at least some of it nurture it back and some of the eight that um, uh, greeted us they didn't know what i was talking about but um, then there's a ninth a ninth one came and joined us and that one, uh, I think it was a she, she had kind of fem a female energy. She, um, um, she said, I know what you're talking about and I will see that it's implemented on our planet. So that was it. And, but on my way back, I had a terrible, I got a terrible headache. I mean, really bad. And um, so Yvonne had to get me out of hypnosis then. Cause I, yeah. When I got back to the Galactic Council, they sent me back into my body right away. So then I had to get out of it. <laughs> it couldn't go on. <laughs> I, 
Are they? I'm learning all those things too. You know, those are all new things for me. And it's fascinating to go through that. I, I, wow. Especially when you're 80 years old, you, know? <laughs> you have to find out all those things. It's amazing in a way. But they're really um, stepping up now more and more and more because um, not only us as a human group, we are destroying ourselves and the pla planet, but the planet itself is, is revolting. Gaia is revolting. You know, she's uh, she says, okay, I've had enough of you guys. <laughs> and so there's going to be some really major changes coming up. Yeah. When when they take you, are you asleep at night or do yes. they take okay? I'm and and I can tell when I'm gone because normally I go to sleep and then I fall asleep on my left side and then after about an hour and a half, two hours, I roll around on my right side and a lot of times I have to get up and go to the bathroom in between sometimes twice and at night and I don't sleep very long I sleep five or six hours but um, if I sometimes they even make me tired early and normally I go to bed between one and two o'clock and sometimes they make make me really tired even before midnight and then when I go to bed and I stay on my left side for seven hours I know I've just I was gone <laughs> You know, if I don't move or anything, I don't have to get up. Yeah, I know that I was on the way somewhere. But I never know. I never know if I'm up with the um, with the babies, with our hybrid babies, or if I'm at the council. So I have to find that out through hypnosis. But I write down the dates and the times and stuff. And yeah. I wish uh, I wish they would unblock my brain so I can I can see what I'm doing and I I would love to find out how they take me you know but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> how how are the babies? How is the hybrid program going? Oh, the hybrid program is going full blast. Yeah, they're always always full to capacity. So this is one of the major reasons I'm, uh, I'd like to get the word out. So because there's so many women that had so-called miscarriages and a lot of times they don't find the fetus and that's where it is. They take the fetuses and keep them up there and, and nurture them and, and they grow up. I found, what I found very interesting is that they keep fetuses from the same woman together as like a family little family group like my my four children they knew each other they they used to play together when they were small and they were kept kind of together i mean now they're grown up and they're they have their jobs but um when they were smaller they were they were kept together like like a little family you know and i thought that was very interesting and they found that they uh, they um they respond better. They, you know, they have a feeling of belonging then. And yeah, I thought that, and yeah, that is, that I thought that was very cool. Because I mean, when you see them hanging from the ceilings and so how, how would you know, you know? <laughs> and yeah. But uh, well, the other day we had what uh, my, you know, I have this white lady that I call white lady, a Pleiadian lady that comes in. She's been with me since I was a kid. And, and they they get to be a thousand or more years old. So our 80 years don't matter to them very much. So um, she, come, she was there and she says, I have to tell you something. Um, we have here a hybrid. Um, that baby is hybrid with a reptilian with a shape-shifting reptilian. And we did not expect the baby to shape-shift already. We thought that they start shape-shifting when they get a little older. Well, the baby is shape-shifting. I just want to alert you. you. If you have that baby in your arm, it might shape-shift in your arms. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, I'm... 
I'm still working up there and as always and yeah it's fascinating well my one son up there he's on the he's on the ship and yeah a few months ago um i was taken to his workstation I, i'd never been there and that was fascinating he works in a in a, in a room um, that the whole wall is window basically and you can see the universe out there i mean it's like you can grab the stars it's so clear because they don't have an atmosphere and it's so clear and i was fascinating and yeah, he said um his job is to monitor the universe to see what's happening there and everything out there and so and towards my right side there was a i could see a huge nebula that was purple and kind of like a, a little bit like a question mark so it looked um, huge purple and then it was the top had green fluorescent mist over it it looked so beautiful and so clear colors and I was fascinated and so and then I don't know what he did but all of a sudden this whole nebula was in 3D uh, in the room turning and moving slowly around and we could actually see it right in the room and it was just hanging there, you know, like 3D, and it was beautiful. I mean, I was amazed. <laughs> Their technology is, I mean, I don't know how far <laughs> advanced from ours. <laughs> is is most of your children, are they fused with grays, or are they, mix, are they a mixture of others? My children are uh, all from Pleiadians. Oh, okay. That's why they look very, very human. They, were, they just look like you and me. Uh, my son up there, he's he's very, very light and his hair is white. Um, the other girls are, um, Septi and Rafti, they are also tall and slender and their faces are elongated. But Kamu is, is the other girl. She is she has more round face like me and, and she has dark hair like I used to have. And so she's uh, she has a little bit more of my genes in that respect. <laughs> so yeah, they are all um, from Pleiadians, and I was uh, all of them were uh, I was artificially inseminated every time, and then when I had my so-called miscarriage, there was no fetus, just a little blood, and that was it, and the baby was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do do women make this agreement before they come into this human life form, or do they get taken and asked if they want to have a hybrid children and have their memories erased? Like, how is that? How is that whole entire process work? I don't. Well, I I I know that you have to agree to that before you're uh, incarnate. You know, and I um, I learned that I um, apparently I'm a very old soul, and they told me I don't really have to incarnate anymore if I don't want to, but I wanted to help the planet because uh, uh, I used to incarnate here a lot in the old in the old times, you know, like a few million years ago, whatever. <laughs> but I. Uh, yeah, I've been with the Lemurians and I've incarnated with the uh, Atlantis. And so, uh, um, but I I decided I wanted to help. So I guess this is part of me helping out here. And I just wish they could really unblock my brain so I can be more aware of what's going on, more consciously aware with my earth physical body here. <laughs> Um, but the, the interesting thing is, though, uh, Audrey, that, you know, until five years ago, I had absolutely no idea. They left me oh, totally, wow. in the, totally in the dark. I had no idea. I mean, I had the miscarriages, but the doctor said, well, you're getting old, you have rotten eggs, and, and so the body gets rid of them. But that was the explanation. But and uh, other than that, and I had a few strange, little strange things, but I never, never, ever associated it with anything out of, uh, you know, ex extraterrestrial or anything like that. Never. 
you know, like a few times missing time that was kind of strange. I felt fell asleep in the middle of a blueberry patch, picking blueberries in the middle of it. I fell asleep, things like that. For two hours, <laughs> you know, I was, I was out. Oh, actually, I was gone because my sister and my friend, they looked for me all over the place and they couldn't find me. But um, I found that out, yeah, just a few couple years ago. Um, but this is really interesting. They kept me in the dark. Maybe also, I think if I would have known all that uh, 40 years ago with my babies and all that, I, 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 I couldn't have handled it maybe, you know, maybe I... Not the way I'm doing it now. Now that I'm, I know what the agenda is. I can work with it. I can, yeah. So, but I've been taken all my life. I've been up on the ship all my life. I found that out with various stages everywhere. They, wherever they, uh, they could just pick you up. And uh, so it's like I having, uh, I was having two lives in one body. And this is very interesting. Yeah. Have you learned anything about, I? so I know that most of your children are Palladians. Have you learned anything about the Palladian culture while you're, while you're there? Not, I, not that I, I probably know the Palladian culture, but I have, it hasn't come through on hypnosis yet. You know, I have to get all of my knowledge through hypnosis. And some I can just, and it all depends what I'm asked. And I, I, I always write down questions for Yvonne. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, I don't, the culture, and it might be a different culture on their planet than it is on the, on the ships, you know what I mean? They, on the ships, they have all kinds of creatures too. They have, we have uh, reptilians there. We have all kinds of greys. And uh, we have some Arcturians there. So on the ship, they all work together too. It's like a mini galactic council there, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> and it's nice to know that they're all working. And they have hybrids that are working there too, you know, a whole bunch of hybrids. Like my son is a hybrid up there, you know, so he's he's working on the ship. And, and uh Two of my the septi drafty two of the girls they are actually on a different planet they are they are also populating different planets with the hybrids so they are on a different planet i don't know what planet it is they they just uh, transferred a picture into my brain as to where they where they live very sparse vegetation there but they have some kind of um, housing there and yeah um, what would you say the most important thing that you have learned from them or what do you think that they're learning from you on here on earth? Well, I'm hoping to get my word out that they're here. They're not here to hurt us. Um, when they take the babies, they have their programs and that's what they're going by. And so to them, we are kind of like... Uh, lesser species you're definitely not as as advanced as they are definitely for sure and so uh, they have their problems but as the players i'm in contact with um they are they try not to hurt you more than they have to and, and try to ease your pains and stuff when they have to hurt you some but um they've always been work, working with me they've always been looking after me even on the planet here, they came and healed me a few times. They uh, made sure when we traveled through Africa that we, that we were safe. They kept some of the animals away from us. They kept, they guided us to a uh, a, a group and we were out in the, in the boondocks so that we wouldn't get caught by um, uh, robbers. They have real, just bandits there that, um, so we were safe during the night and so they've, that I found out under hypnosis too. <laughs> and so they've been watching out over us and they're doing that. So in a way, um, I'm just fulfilling my promise that I'm gonna help them. 
and I hope to, with, this is one of the reasons I'm speaking out in, in the way I do, is I'm hoping to alert some of the women to realize that they do have children, that there's a program going on, and that they're taking good care of your children up there. They really are, and they're being, uh, yeah. So that's, that's what I would like to alert people here on, on the planet to, that we're not alone. That we're, of, of course, there's all kinds of different aliens too. There's also some that uh, are not as nice as, you know, I was lucky. I was lucky with the Pleiadians. There's some, I was taken on December 18, 2021. I was taken... And uh, no, it was 22, December 20, uh, 22 last year. And um, I knew I was taken because I had a really strange mark on my arm when I woke up in the morning. And under hypnosis, I the first thing I said, this isn't right, this isn't right. And, um, and I was very agitated and I was pinned to a slab. I could move and... Then I sent out a message to my white lady, Uru. I said, Uru, why are you? This isn't right. This isn't right. And then I got an answer from her. I'm coming. And she came into the room with four huge grays. They were seven, eight feet tall. Huge grays. And um, she was very, I could feel she was agitated. She was upset. And they walked into the room and the little grays that were around there they just squished against the wall and didn't move and so they came and took me off that slab and then the four, four huge grace they surrounded us like bodyguards and we walked off and then I blacked out and the next thing I knew we were back on our ship and I had to go through it like a, it was like a rounded like a tunnel I had to go into the tunnel and it had very intense blue light and it felt really good in there. So I had stayed there for a little while and then um, I, I had to cut out the other end and there was a round um, a thing on the above me, like a like round plate and it emanated pulsating orange and yellow light and pulsated light and I had to stand under that for a while. And then I asked my white lady, I said, what, what's all this about? And she said, you had radiation poisoning from the other ship. So they, they eliminate the radiation. And she said, I'm not going to take you to the babies today. I'm just going to take you straight home. And that's why I got my mic on my arm from them. And uh, from I guess from being pinned there, maybe they, they clamped me down or something. I don't know. But those are, and they were not supposed to take me out. You know, I have this implant at the base of my brain. And I think that's probably like a, tag so others don't touch me this i belong to my my people and uh, but they did anyway so that's why she was so very upset um has any of the, how do women figure out or start to know that they're part of the hybrid program or has any of the women contacted you over the years or a couple of um, months well, I've uh, when I was in when I was still living in California, I went to a, a bunch of uh, meetings, also with uh, Yvonne Smith and uh, the Sarah Group and things, and also at the at some of the UFO conferences. I had women come up to me and say, "Yeah, they've um, they've had a, a bunch of miscarriages, and some of them they never even thought of maybe as it well try hypnosis, try see what happened." You know, I'm trying to, because once you, and anyway, that works for me. Some people say, oh, well, I don't, I don't really want to know, but me, I have to know. Once I know, even if it's negative, once I know I can deal with it and I can deal with it and put it behind me. But if it's, if I don't know what happened, it's always in front of me. It looms always in front of me. What happened? You know, so I, I really have to know. And uh, yeah, I so that are the kids, the children that are born from these women, do they know? Do they 
do some of them want to see their mothers or how does that all how does that process work out well the i can just tell you what happened to me okay. um so i was taken up when the when they were small um when they were i mean i'm sure i saw them more, more than but that's that came that they, that i transgressed back under hypnosis so if i have more hypnosis session i you know i'm sure i can ask for more time with my children but um one time i was up there <clears throat> they were about maybe four years old because they're very close together since you know the, the fetus was three months and then maybe i had a month in between that i was uh, impregnated again and so then another three months, so maybe every four or five, four, five months, they had another fetus. So the, the children are very close together. And uh, not like us, where we have nine, nine months to carry them. And so I, um, uh, and, and I came into the room and they were playing. And, and so we sat down and we played together. And then my son, he's very inquisitive. And he says, um, how is it on your planet? Uh, how, do, how do you get from one point to the other point? And I said, well, if it's far away, we fly. So they could understand that. But I said, when, when it's closer, we have roads and we have cars and we have bicycles and we have motorcycles. And, and they, they, didn't, they, they had no concept for that at all. They didn't know what a road was or anything like that. <laughs> and then my son here, my earth son, um, he was also taken up with me when he was a child too. And so, um, but not, he's not always, you know, just every now and then I think. And one time we were up there and I found the, my, uh, the other four children, we were in a, they were in a room and they were playing with um, light spheres. They were maybe baseball size and they were juggling them like, um, yeah, but without, uh, not without, without touching them, just with their energies, they were juggling them around and, you know, they were bouncing. And so when we came, that's what they did when we came in. And so then my, my, uh, my other son here, my birth son, uh, he, I said, those are your siblings. And he couldn't understand that because he knew he didn't have any brothers or sisters. And so they came, the, the kids came over to him because he had curly hair and they all had straight hair. They'd never seen curly hair. So they touched his hair. And, and so then they gave him a sphere to, to play with. And he tried. Of course, his energy is different. His vibrations is different than theirs. And so he tried to bounce them and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. So finally, he got upset and he threw it down. And all of a sudden, the sphere started bouncing and bouncing and higher and higher. And then it was bouncing around the room. And the other four were looking, wow, this is cool. So they threw theirs down. And pretty soon we had five spheres bouncing around the whole room. It was so funny. <laughs> but that was kids, you know, playing. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and then I saw them at that, um, well, what we call graduation. Um, I was taken up and, and uh, Uru, my white lady, she took me into a room. There was a whole bunch of hybrid uh, people there, whole bunch. And uh, my son saw me come in and he came over and he, he said, yeah, we are having, we finished our, uh, our training and now we are waiting to be assigned to our new jobs. So basically graduation, you know, so they were kind of all hanging out and celebrating a little bit. And, and uh, so then the, the other, the three girls came and, and, um, and then Uru, the one with the dark hair, no, not Uru, uh, Kamu, the one with the dark hair, she came over and gave me a big hug because I taught them how to hug when they were kids. I showed them how to hug and, and, she gave me a big hug and she's, I remember, I remember. <laughs> and then the other three gave me a hug too. And all of a sudden I realized the whole room was staring at us and what are they doing over there? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that was one of those little things. 
it's those human things, you know, <laughs> hugging. So when you're interacting with them, does that mean that a lot of ET races don't have the emotional range that we do? No, no, not at all. Some, they are very, um, a lot of them are just, um, yeah, they're, they're just total business basically. And you know, um, when you think about it, I don't know if you heard about that, but like around uh, end of the 18th century, beginning of the 19th century, uh, here our uh, human, human, it was said, men don't cry, be a man, don't cry, you know. Boys and men were not supposed to cry. That's part of us, you know, part of um, not showing your emotions. And a lot of times they, you know, they, could, they wanted to cry, but they couldn't because uh, uh, our, our life form, we don't, they told them not to cry. So, and, 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 other, and, and on other planets that went all the way down to nothing, you know, not to show anything. And over time, you suppress it so bad that, um, I mean, the basics are still in, in the body, but they just, you know, you, you don't let them come up. And that's what the Galactic Council wants to do again, to get some emotions, some feelings back up, that they start feeling again. And do they do they see human emotions as a commodity to, for them or something important that they have to like reintegrate back into themselves? Yeah, it's not a no, not like a commodity, but it is very. Um, uh, they feel it's important um, that because a, a lot of these species have problem procreating. You know, why should I go to bed with somebody that I have no feelings for? I'd rather go to the movies or, or do something in my, at my work that I like to do or play a game or whatever. You know, why should I go to bed with somebody? So they started having problems uh, procreating. And this is part of it. Wow, and that's I why didn't... the council wants that, wants them to start up again. And uh, yeah, to have I a didn't... natural, you know, because then they start having... Uh, artificially intelligence more you know they 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 clone them whatever they do clone or whatever they do but it's not the real thing it's not the right thing and the natural thing basically so that's why the council is uh, promoting that again so that means that a lot of races are just used to having children in a lab instead of the natural natural way yeah, they used to just you know get the women get their eggs and that's and that was that that was done for them, and then you know get the sperm from the guys, and that's why the the Pleiadians they said um, the one I, I, because I asked them why they are doing this taking our you know um, taking our fetuses and things and so she said because they have problems with that, their women are barren they can't have children anymore. Because over the many millennia, I guess it's, and, but some of their males still have sperm, so they want to at least have uh, part of their, uh, and they're very compatible. We are very compatible with humans, so yeah, that's why they're doing it. The explanation I got. I'm sure that's not the only reason, but <laughs> because they have hybrids wow. with the, with reptilians and with greys and things too, but. Uh, this is part of their basic reason with so they're this. starting to see that the emotions that we have are starting to become important yes emotions and feelings yes definitely they they are important and and you know the galactic council the, the head of the galactic council and and when it told me that this is the reason i'm supposed to go to the other planets uh it kind of I could feel it kind of smile and say, um, yeah, you, you tell them to activate the, the feelings and emotions. Not as much as you humans have. <laughs> That's not necessary, but because we go overboard sometimes with our feelings and emotions very badly. <laughs> <laughs>
So I know that you are on their ships and interacting with their ships. Do you know what their ships look like in the inside or the outside? Like, I know that you said in the beginning of the interview that they're trying to show themselves, like, their ships and stuff. Like, do you know what they might look like? Um, I don't know exactly. I, I never saw the ship from the outside because when I'm taken up, I, I'm all, all of a sudden, I'm there, I'm inside. Um, I know it's a huge mothership. It's huge. I mean, you can walk and walk and walk. <laughs> and uh, we've gone to different uh, spots in the, in the ship. And you really have huge workstations there. And, and when, they took my, uh, when they, they took me up with my car from the I-5, Interstate 5 in, in California, um, I was in a huge hangar kind of room. But this is all, it's a huge ship. Um, I don't know what kind of smaller vessels they have there. I'm sure they have all kinds of different ones and uh, that they scoot around with. And so, and I, like I said, I don't even know how they take me. If they take me to a smaller ship and then bring me up or if they beam me up some other way, I don't know. I cannot, I, I, you know, I have no consciousness of that. And I'm trying to, that's one of the questions I had with Yvonne uh, this time when we had to, we couldn't finish the hypnosis. And I said, how, how, they, how are they taking me? Um, in, in, in California, I installed a, a night vision camera be, that reacts to motion in my bedroom. So I thought maybe I can catch them, but no. When I got up, the camera started rolling because it, I triggered it with my motion, my moving. But at times it was just, it, it clicked on, but it was just frozen. And I think that's when I was taken, you know, when they, they can just freeze everything. And I know that I sometimes have strange effect on lights. Sometimes when I'm, uh, especially when I think if, if my emotions go towards my alien contacts, maybe because at the one's place, one time they um, they filmed me under hypnosis, and they got everything set up. She was starting to put me under, and all of a sudden, all the cameras went off. <laughs> and the guy said, "We just put new batteries, and we don't know how what that ha what happened." And Yvonne just laughed. She said, oh, "You know, that happens often with us here." <laughs> And I know my, my TV screen in, in California, that was strange. You know, sometimes it went black or that was outing or something. But sometimes in the middle of watching a show, it went bright fluorescent green. Just. Wow. <laughs> like I said, uh, in, my, in my old age, I get all kinds of interesting facts. <laughs> <laughs> happening I, I don't have time to get, procrastinate and get you know really down to being old <laughs> my my other question that i have for you is um what what do you think that your abilities are because i know that you get taken and i know some people i heard that their abilities become high in and stuff like have you figured it out what some of your natural abilities are um i don't have any of those psychic things happening with me or anything like that um i know that sometimes i get feelings that maybe i shouldn't do something and if i push it it goes wrong you know so now i'm staying away from like the other day I was supposed to do something and uh, go someplace and I got up in the morning and said I can't go I can't go there was actually no reason I couldn't have gone but I just had a feeling I can't go and then I don't I leave that alone because um I think there's there's things that uh and that started maybe when I was 
yeah, maybe in my late 50s, beginning of my 60s, that's when that started getting more and more, you know. Um, I have a tendency that I, one thing that I can do is just take people as they are. And I've always done that. I've, I don't judge. I take them as they are and, uh, and I try to help a lot. You know, I've always done that all my life. I've always been helping people and, and I love children. I've always been, had children in my home and, uh, I've always, <laughs> so <laughs> I've always been working with children. Yeah. And so that's, that's one thing. And now <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to help women with their children and see did they influence your decision to move to Germany? I think they did, yes. They kind of pushed me. They really kind of pushed me. And it was beginning to um, uh, yeah, be very, yeah, I had to come here. And just getting this apartment was amazing. Everybody in Germany was, wow, you got an apartment because it's very hard to find apartments here. And I got a beautiful apartment right on the river. And it was so strange. My son that lives here in the, in the, neighbor, in the neighboring town, um, uh, he, uh, he was talking to a real estate guy because he was interested in a property that he, uh, he was looking for a property for himself. And so the guy said, told him after a while, he said, I'm not really good uh, that uh, good in, in properties I handle more apart uh, you know rentals and my son just oh you do well my mother is coming here uh, in, in June and that was in March sometime my mother is coming here in June do you have an apartment for her <laughs> you know, just like that and he said no as a matter of fact I do <laughs> I mean just you know the uh, what are the odds and so we got this apartment it's beautiful right on the river and um, nothing in front of me, and I can I can sit here and watch watch all the ducks and geese and swans. <laughs> but um, yeah, things are just falling into place, and I know I I know I have to be here. Also, like the contacts I have here, you know that when they I think I sent you a picture when they filmed me here in my in my apartment. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, you know, just getting the context. I I I met a guy on a group there, and I joined this one group on 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 um, as uh, not Zoom WhatsApp group on WhatsApp, and um, and this one guy, he's from uh, Austria. He lives near Vienna, in Austria, and uh, so also an old guy like me, eighty years old, and, and he's a well, you should contact so and so. You should contact so and so. You know, so I did, and then things happen. Mm -hmm. And then I get moved to another one, and another guy that I talked to, he uh, put together a little UFO uh, conference in Frankfurt this year, which I didn't know about. So we talked for quite a while, and he wants me as a speaker next year. So, wow. So we'll see what happens there. You know. But I told well, you I was a speaker this year in, in, in the U of Ocon in San Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that's that's amazing that you're getting your message out there, your information out there, and educating people about this. That's 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 really amazing. Uh, in, in Germany, they're way behind us, you know, they're not that open yet to this up, but it's slowly coming. It's slowly coming. It's getting a little bit more and more. And you see more and more also. YouTube and and on the on the internet and things and they're they're getting close, more and more open now. Mm -hmm. What would you say that the most important thing that you have learned from them from the Galactic Council or from the hybrid program? Um, I think the realization that actually, um, like. We were always thinking we we're the most uh, most advanced species in the universe. Uh -uh. We're not. <laughs> and, 
definitely not. And we always thought we know everything here. You know, if our scientists said that's the way it is. Uh, 5,000 years ago, our civilization started. Now they find runes from 50,000 years ago or 100,000 years ago. Here, where I'm living in, in Rottenburg am Neckar in, in Germany, actually this place here goes back. They found uh, uh, things from Neanderthal, tools and stuff from Neanderthals 90,000 years ago here where I live. And the Romans were here. They, they have Roman walls still here and and uh, they uh, they they excavated uh, columns and 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 stone you know faces and things like that and and plaques and actually what I thought was really cool what they did here they built the museum right on, on top of the dig so the dig couldn't be harmed anymore it couldn't be destroyed or anything it was saved and the building is right on top and you can actually walk down and. Uh, they have walkways uh, like little bridges over the dig so you can walk and take a look and how they how they dig out the roman artifact i thought that was awesome cool wow, idea that's that's amazing yeah <laughs> but i mean you know um that's one of the realizations and um yeah that is and that when uh, how should i say this um when they do things to us, we just sometimes don't have any idea why they're doing it or what it's for. Now that I understand that they have a hybrid program, I understand where they're coming from, why they have to do this in order to help their own species, to help us also uh, to evolve. Because if if we are the hybrids, we are half, half of the hybrids. Uh, so our human personality in our human uh, and we are, we are evolving too into the hybrid program and we have to realize that that we are also advancing forward do do any of the hybrid children ever come to earth and learn about earth yeah well some of them are actually placed on earth um years ago they used to uh, grow up on the ship and then they are being placed on earth and then they had I met a girl once at on one of the uh, conferences and her mission was here on earth that she had to um, she was a regular human but she was always been taken and she, she had the hybrids would come to her door basically here on, on the planet on earth and she had to find them an apartment and show them how to live here because they had no idea they had to integrate and it was very difficult because, um, you know, like she would tell them after they've been wearing the same clothes for a month, she, you have to change the clothes because the neighbors start talking about you, that you always wear the same clothes every day. You, know, you have to have different clothes. So stuff like that, which is just for us common sense, you know, but they don't know. So do they actually like physically like come here and start to integrate into our society yes, yes. oh wow but uh, they stopped doing that a few uh, years back now they're doing it more like they're um putting the hybrid embryo into a woman here to carry it out and that way it's born here it's raised in our culture and when when the child is a certain age it, it is being taken and uh, up and, and showed uh, shown things and uh, it knows where it's coming from basically you know and uh, so that is and, and but they have it a lot easier they're just they already are raised in our society regardless if it's german or american or it's italian or spanish or whatever um, but they're raised in that society and they they're integrated and they have it a lot easier. Did they have a lot of problems trying to integrate hybrids here on this planet? Well, when they when they already uh, when they already grown, yes. But uh, if not, uh, when they're raised here, that's easy because they're they're raised in our culture. They don't a lot of them. They don't know until they're uh, maybe eight or ten years old that they are hybrids. But uh, 
So that, but for them, it's easier. They just live their lives here and then they can do their thing here. But uh, some of them are having problems and some of them have to, had to be taken away again from the planet because they were in danger. And so it's not as, it's not as easy, but the, the program is there and basically, but they do want to help us. They, but their basic idea is they want to raise our consciousness to the level that um, that we can join the Galactic Council, basically. Join the Galactic Federation as, as, a, as a species. But we have to stop killing each other first. We are the only uh, galactic species that is really killing each other. I mean, they might have wars going on in, in the galaxy, one species against another, but no, they don't kill each other. And that's what we are still doing. Yeah, I I started posting some stuff that I remember from going to different galactic schools growing up. And yeah, I, I can confirm that's one one of the major issues here on this planet is that they're yeah. not used to other humans going out and seeking to go kill other humans. They're usually yeah. It's, they usually hear reports of one species fighting another species on yeah. the planet. That is that is one thing. And I mean, look look at what's happening here. Some of them, they, they kill others just for the fun of it, you know. Let's see. <laughs> I don't like this guy, bang. <laughs> and and now, they're, now it's even gotten worse with all the shootings going on. People don't even care who they kill anymore. You know, they just randomly shoot into a mass of people and this is crazy yeah so we have to stop doing that and uh that's when we can but this is you know the, the whole program is here to basically help us to raise our consciousness to the next level did they say how far we are on our conscious evolution as a species um well we have how should i word this one now um there are some dark forces there there used to be a whole bunch of reptilians living on our planet they were underground and they lived on our planet and um some of them have been taken away by the galactic council they have taken they've taken them but there was, um, so right now it's very obvious um, the, the two groups here on the planet. You have people that just take care of themselves and just take everything what they want and go around and shoot people. And you have other people that put their lives on the line every day to save people. You know, so you, the, 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 the good and the bad are the two things are really breaking apart. Now you have two specific separate, separate groups and uh, 50 years ago they were kind of mixed you have a little bit more here and a little bit more here but they were kind of all in between they had a lot of in-betweens but now it's more like good or bad you know and um, it's getting more and more distinct and this is one of the things that uh, they're talking about that the the darker <sighs> The planet apparently is also on the verge of, how should I say, of cloning itself, separating, and part of part of the planet is going to stay here, in the third dimension, and the other part is going to go up actually to the fifth dimension, and so the the that's why we're breaking the, the people up. The, the good ones are going to go to the fifth dimension. They are ready to advance, and the others have to stay on the third dimension and learn more, have to incarnate more and more here to learn uh, more until they are ready. That's part of these spiritual messages that I'm getting. So yeah, that's what's happening and we're right in the middle of this, Audrey. Yeah, yeah, we definitely are right in the middle of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I also told you that my, my earth son here is a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, I I, I do um, yeah. remember, the, remember you telling me that. Yeah. Um, 
but he doesn't know. Yeah. He, he um, says, Mom, I'm not ready to know details right now. You know, but he still started his family. I have a little granddaughter now. And, yeah. And so he just started his family. He doesn't want details. He you knows that? I, I, basically what happened, but he doesn't want to know details. Would that make your granddaughter a hybrid as well? Or Probably, how does that? Well, at, least a, at, at least a quarter. Mm -hmm. so in order to wrap up the show is there any type of last messages or any pieces of information that you want the audience to know about well um, all I can see is there's going to be a big change on the planet things are and as far as okay I'll tell you one thing. Um, when I had my regression two days ago with Yvonne and I started out and you just couldn't hear me, but I was already under and I was talking and I was at the Galactic Council. They, they took me and they showed me pictures. They put images in my head of what's kind of going to happen here. And it's... Uh, Apparently, some of the um, plates are shifting. They're going to shift. And a lot of more uh, um, volcanic activity is happening all around the world. And so this whole our whole crust is shifting. And um, so they've been showing me some of the images. It does not look pretty. And some of it is happening in the United States. And not where we expected, like California or so. No, it's going to happen in the middle. In the middle, the, the, the there's going to be a crack, and the, the plates are shifting. And apparently, uh, in the Midwest, nobody expects anything there, but that's where it's going to happen. And so I don't know when this is going to happen. It could be it, not in our life. It could be tomorrow. You know, their their time. The time frame is different than ours, but I think it's 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 gearing up for that more and more. Look at the East Coast, how, how, where you are at, you have a lot of more storms and very more uh, severe weather things, you know. And so it's, but um, yeah, things are happening all over the world. Also in the in, in the whole. Um, circle of fire, you know, around the Pacific, all the volcanoes, a lot of them are getting more active now. Even Italy, Vesuvius is starting to spoo little things every now and then. <laughs> They're starting to feel tremors and have a lot more earthquakes down there. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of things. Things are happening and that will, will be so intense that our wars that we are, that we're fighting now right now are going to uh, you know we can't take care of that anymore we, we have to make sure that we can take care of ourselves so beware well i want to say thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing this information with people um Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to share this type of information and educating. You very, you're very welcome. <laughs> but uh, I also want to tell you, Audrey, if you ever think of going on vacation, try Germany and come see me. I got a guest room for you. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, I would love that. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing the information and educating us about the hybrid program and the Galactic Council that you're a part of. But thank you so much for coming on and sharing that type of information. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs>